By 19, he was hooked on the night scene, a pipe dream, in real estate team, out in California with history in the making. But mom and pop so addicted to the rock that their eyes couldn't see the diamond, diamond that they got. It's so hot on blocks where your future's cooked in pots, got the water barely boiling. Yeah, turn them up a notch. Turn them up a lot. They need to hear this from Japan straight to Barack, got the streets whispering bloody murder, where peace and unity are all things unheard of. And so he goes, the only route he knows, the kind that ends you up, squat, pop, touch your toes, and now your doves flying, crying with your soul, and it don't feel no pain to get old. I'm talking heaven. The government will cry recession, but he's been broke stressing. Ain't nothing new but learning life lessons. So when it comes, he had to be ready. And so he locked and he loaded and he rocked steady. Ain't cocked and he fired at every. And then he re-upped until his clip was on empty, and he ain't got no armor. So what he gonna do when he see Miss Karma? And I am living proof he don't want her drama, cause she can bring the pressure, make it hotter than a sauna. But I know you, you wanna be free from all these troubles around you. And when trouble surrounds you, you can lean on me. I appreciate that song so much. I want to take a moment and thank my brother Kevin Lavender Jr. for writing such an inspirational song. However, the poem within the song is my biographical attempt to poetically portray the life of a former student of mine who committed suicide one Christmas Eve. My name is Candace Lavender, and I'm an educator. I spent the last seven years of my life pursuing education. I'm currently a doctoral student studying educational leadership right here at Michigan State University. I spent the last 10 years of my life as a spoken word and hip hop artist. I've been able to use my talents as an artist and my background in education to engage with thousands of students in classrooms, after school programs, youth organizations, motivating and inspiring young people to speak life into their narrative, to advocate for themselves, or to articulate the change they want to see in the world by using what I believe is their greatest asset, their voice. Because as Sharon Draper once said, thoughts need words, and words need a voice. See, when youth speak and are heard, youth can succeed, youth can thrive, and youth can survive. There's an African proverb that says, a child that is not embraced by the village will burn it down to feel its warmth. And as the life and death of my former student plays over and over in my mind, I can't help but think that a child that goes unheard by the village will allow their dysfunction or death to speak for them. As a spoken word artist, I truly believe that the greatest power we possess is our voice. In fact, I think the good Lord wanted us to know just how powerful our voice is at the time of birth. As new parents wait anxiously in delivering rooms, awaiting the first cries of their child to determine the stability of life. See, their cries, their voice is their breath. Can you imagine not being able to breathe? And as those parents take that infant child home, they stand watch, waiting to understand what a cry means at night, what a whimper means during the day, seeking to analyze what that child is trying to communicate. But somewhere along the way, as that child gets older, we lose sight of that, and we seek to control more than communicate. We're looking for compliance more than consultation oftentimes with the best intentions. 
that come with the responsibility of raising and teaching them. To ensure safety, don't touch that stove, it's hot. To promote health, wash your hands, probably now more than ever. <laughs> Eat your vegetables, brush your teeth before bed. Or to promote manners, say please and thank you. And while these directives serve a purpose for the development of a child, it often extends to the way we control and perceive their own ideas, their own imaginations and perspectives, sending the message that their voice doesn't matter, that they should only speak when spoken to, or that adults are the only people that know what's best for them. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't parent or there should be no guidance. And I'm not even saying that young people know what's best for them. In fact, as a hip hop artist who prides herself on lyricism, I'm almost convinced that all youth don't know what's best for them musically as I frustratingly debate top five rappers of all times. Two chains? I mean, no. <laughs> but what I am saying is, we must stop eliminating youth voice out of the conversation, especially when we have goals centered around addressing issues in education or youth organizations that won't even consult the very youth they're looking to serve. So let them speak, or youth voice will continue to be the most underused, undervalued contribution to our policies, our practices, and our way of life. So let them speak. I choose to use spoken word as an opportunity to understand my students, to see life through their eyes, to see how their personal experiences have shaped how they see school, learning. So let them speak. Now, you don't have to be a spoken word artist to achieve this. In fact, a good place to start is just by listening to them. But as professor of education, Dana Mitra at Penn State University des describes in her student voice pyramid, we must go beyond listening and seek opportunities to collaborate with young people and put them in positions of leadership where they can take on the role of the decision makers. So let them speak. Parents, let them speak at dinner tables and ask them about their day. Teachers, bring them to the table and collaborate with them at curriculum development meetings. Allow them to give insight on instructional strategies. Politicians, take a step aside off your platforms and let a young person step up in leadership so that they can articulate the changes they want to see in the world. Let them speak. I will close with a poem a collaborative poem that I constructed by taking poems from several students at four alternative schools. As a premise, I told students to imagine your voice being taken away. Imagine a world where your voice didn't matter. I told them to imagine an audience that would hear this poem and move differently. Students responded and said, take my voice and you take the sun. Take my voice and you shadow the moon. Take my voice and you will never hear how my mom defeated cancer but couldn't defeat the hand of my stepfather. Take my voice and you'll never hear how my brother was shot point blank range in the middle of the day. It took the cops so long to arrive that my sister's ice cream melted by the time they got there. Take my voice and you take my legacy. Take my voice and you only live to tell your story. Take my voice and forget about everything you said about equality. Forget about everything you said about freedom. Take my voice and may God have mercy on your soul. Take my voice and show them the murderer that you are. Take my voice and we'll be dead by morning. Take my voice and we'll burn this village to the ground. Take my voice, and it will be you who will have to tell the world that you killed us. Thank you.